This is Dina Marie, and I'm back with Franciscan friar, Father Dan Petit. We've been talking about St. Francis, the Franciscan saints. In the month of May, we celebrate St. Bernardin of Siena. He lived in the early 1400s. And we also have an interesting feast day that recognizes the Franciscan community, Father Dan, and that is the actual basilica in Assisi that was dedicated uh, in the year 1253, I believe. Uh, welcome right. back, Father Dan. Thanks for joining us. And Tell us a little bit about this basilica that connects us with the life of St. Francis. Well, the, the uh, Francis, of course, died in 1226. And in 1228, he was canonized in Assisi by Pope Gregory IX. And after he canonized Francis, he actually laid the foundation stone for the basilica. So Francis's life and this basilica are very closely intertwined with each other. And so in 1228, the basilica was actually begun and they finished the lower basilica. And then of course they finished the upper basilica in 1253, which is when it was finally um, consecrated and dedicated as you mentioned in 1253. And it just commemorates the time of Francis's life. For example, in the upper uh, basilica, you have the whole of Francis's life depicted by the great artist Giotto, who painted the life of Francis various times in Francis's life. And they're up, these frescoes are priceless and they're right on the walls of the upper basilica. Um, but what's really interesting is Francis, because the, the basilica wasn't built yet when he was canonized, they interned his body at San Giorgio, which was at that time the cathedral of the Bishop of Assisi. And then in, in um, 1230, they moved his body from San Giorgio to the newly established um, lower basilica that they were able to finish. And they were so afraid that there would be a mob for relics taking his body that they hid his body at the time and no one knew where it was except the father general of the franciscans and one other friar and they didn't find it until 1818 wow they finally found the body and it was hidden in the pillar that was sustaining the huge altar in the upper basilica you had to have a pillar to the earth to support such a heavy marble altar well they put them in there and in 18 they 18 they found this body of francis his sarcophagus in this pillar and that's when pope um pius the seventh built the crypt which is there now and, um, and so now you can go down into the crypt and you actually see the pillar sustaining the upper basilica's altar. And in that pillar is Francis of Assisi. And there's his, uh, there's his uh, grave site. Mm -hmm. And around him are the four closest brothers that lived with him throughout life were down there in the crypt because they also buried them close to him because they were so right. close to, to him as well. Right. So and it's so quite a story. It's quite a story, in other words, that yeah, you developed, you know. Absolutely. And just to have a feast day to recognize that particular commemoration, you know, why would we put it on the calendar, the Franciscan calendar, to have a building? I We see the, the idea of the Franciscan saints and any of our saints, but what's unique or special about recognizing the building? Well, I think the building is, I guess you could say, uh, like a monument. Mm -hmm. to the saint and his accomplishments. Uh, it's the seat of tremendous art by Giotto depicting the life of Francis. Uh, for example, when I've been in Assisi, there are times when I've given tours of the upper basilica and I find myself as I'm giving people tours, I'm telling the life of Francis and I'm actually evangelizing as I do it. And that's what the Basilica does. It really evangelizes people in the gospel of Christ because that's, that's the life of Francis. So the Basilica is a place that kind of, that really commemorates the, the saint and his accomplishments in Christ uh, for all of us in the church to celebrate. Right. 
We're talking with Father Dan, a Franciscan friar, and learning a little bit about Franciscan spirituality and some of its history. And in the month of May, a couple of beautiful feast days that honor St. Francis and the community. Give us a sense, because Father Dan, you mentioned you've been to Assisi, just the 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 pilgrimage sites, just people who are drawn, I know for hundreds of years, people have traveled to Italy to visit these sites around St. Francis, just the mindset of a pilgrim and being a pilgrim leader, how you would really connect these people to the holy sites of Francis. Well, I think uppermost for a pilgrimage would be the faith, uh, faith in Christ and faith in how God raises up saints among us, uh, rather than just being a tourist uh, looking at ancient sites that seem to have no re- bearing on us now. No, the pilgrim is to be revived in faith, and we begin to learn from the great works of God in the past how he's still working today and how he's working in our lives, you know, and especially as a Franciscan to go to Assisi is so special for that reason. That's the, that's the work of the Holy Spirit among the Franciscans right there in Assisi that revives you in your vocation as a pilgrim. And the pilgrim is then about faith, which is the acknowledgement of the work of God in our midst and being revived by that and strengthened. Mm -hmm. Just being with other people who maybe for the first time have traveled to SEC, you know, what are some of the fruits? What are some of the examples that you've seen of people really encountering Christ through these holy sites? Well, you know, it's funny you asked that because one time when I was there, I was asked by some Mormon missionaries. They saw me in my habit and they said, they asked me if, if I could give them a tour of the upper basilica. And um, so I did. I said, sure. I had some time. It was a Saturday and I was there studying Italian um, while I was getting ready for my studies in Rome. And it was a Saturday, so I gave them a tour of the Upper Basilica, and then we went out, and we got some uh, desserts and sat outside. And one of them, see, what they were anticipating is they were going to evangelize me, but one of them started to get turned on to Christ so much that the other one started to move him to the back and wouldn't let me talk to him anymore. And I thought to myself, you know, that's the effect of Francis on someone is you really do meet Christ. When, when you start to talk about Francis, and all I did was use the frescoes of Giotto to introduce them to the life of Francis, and at least this one fellow, this young fellow, met Jesus. Wow. And uh, that, to me, really said a lot about uh, Francis of Assisi, and what, what you do when you meet this man is you meet Christ, you know. Right. And I think that's with all of our saints, that if we really look at the life of a saint, it is meeting Christ. How did they encounter Christ? How did Christ change their lives? And then we see really, it's not Mary, it's not Joseph, it's not St. Francis, it's Jesus Christ in my life. So what a great lesson to learn from St. Francis. Absolutely. Yeah. And that same spirit is working in your life, working in my life, working in all our lives. And that's the beauty of the saints, though. It doesn't have to be Francis. It could be St. Ignatius of Loyola. It could be St. Dominic. I mean, there's so many different saints uh, that God raises up for all of us. Right. We've been talking with Father Dan, Franciscan friar, and for those of you in our local area, uh, for women out there, if you'd like to come and join us for the June eight-day women's retreat, you're welcome to visit the website at Our Lady of Peace Retreat, olpretreat.org, and get a little more information. Father Dan, it's always great to, to visit with you. I hope that you can come back on the program. We'll talk more about Franciscan spirituality in the future. Would you help us close uh, by offering a closing prayer? Sure. Let's pray in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear Heavenly Father, we pray for a generous portion of your Holy Spirit to descend upon all of us now that we too may follow after your Son in the spirit of the great saints that have gone before us. And we ask all of this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And may the blessed mighty God descend upon you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you so much, Father Dan, for your time. God bless you. Good to be with you.